I'm in a simple cleaner. I cannot think um, of all the paints. Of all the what? The paints. Okay. <laughs> I cannot think of all the pains in men's breasts and in men's pants without the urge to sleep or to lie down. I cannot think without seeing God's face in a little child's smile or in the lonely cry in the night or in the sea. I cannot think of all the pains that have come and gone. Pains in men's waists and in men's shoes. I cannot think of anything without having to put my mind together. I run around in circles, li like sprinkling water, swearing out loud and counting out all the pains in my breast and in my pants. I cannot have true relief without wearing a neat tie. I cannot think of all the pains and all the time wasted. All the craze of lonely men in village rooms and all the bodies that lie out cold in avoided streets. I cannot run out, old, like a joyful child. Watch this guy, pregnant with pain or with turbulent rain. I cannot think of the soil without the urge to sleep down. I cannot think of the tears the lonely geographies, and the third world, without the urge to cry. Also just sit. I was in a Masambi, a woman's well. She gave love. She's a wife. She's a mother and a friend. She's a sister, a survivor till the end. Appreciate her, we don't dare. Ask her worries, we don't care. Wipe away her tears, they are invisible as air. She works, cooks, cleans. She laughs, she helps comforts and hides her pain. She what she swallows her pride and dignity. And when you need something, she gives it to you in order for you to be free. But what do you do? You call her a bitch, a slut, a tramp in a hole. You call her nothing. I call her strong, smart, sensual, tolerant, giving, proud. I call her woman. Shine governor of the red dress. I always saw, I always said, if I were grown and free, I'd have a gown of reddest red, as fine as you could see, to wear out walking sleek and slow upon a summer day, and there'd be one to see me so, and flip the world away, and he'd be a gallant one with stars behind his eyes, and hair like metal in the sun, and lips too warm for lies. I always pictured us high honored in the town, gay and good. Now, well, I'm grown to womanhood, and I have the silly gown. music of your soul was transmitted into my youthful soul and like water in a sponge it sank deep into my veins you never died my father but to live in you in me you never failed my father but succeeding in me oh spirit of my father fill me once more fill me with wisdom to wake the sleeping oh spirit of my father come back and like as the wind crumbled the decay tree 
Oh, patriotic spirit of our father, come back and like as the huge regiment, mobilize the mobilized generation. We who must continue for you led my queen of you. I will drown your name in honor, queen. Sing your name, ring your name like a saturated sun. Oh, country. Mm. Universally acknowledged that a zombie in possession of brains must be in want of more brains. Never was this truth more plain than during the recent attacks at Netherfields Park, in which a household of 18 was slaughtered and consumed by a horde of living dead. My dear Mr. Bennett, said his lady to him one day, have you heard that Netherfields Park has been occupied again? But Mr. Bennett made no answer. And what is his name? Bingley, a single man of four or five thousand a year. What a fine thing for our girls. How, How so? so? Can you train them in words of swordsmanship and musketry? <laughs> How can you be so tiresome? Oh. You must know that I am thinking of his marrying one of them. Marriage? And Tom such as these? But surely this is Bingley has no such designs. Designs? Designs? Nonsense! How, How can you talk so? I am actually thinking that he might fall in love with one of them. And therefore we need to go and see him as soon as he comes. I see no occasion for that. But consider our girls! I am considering them, you silly old woman. <laughs> I would much prefer their minds be engaged in the deadly arts than clouded with dreams of marriage and fortune. As yours so clearly is. Mm -hmm. I warned you that none of our girls has something to recommend them. They are all silly and ignorant like their mother. Exception being Lizzie, who has something more of a killer instinct. Mr. Bennet, how can you be so cruel to your children? You take delight in vexing me. You have no compassion for my poor nerves. <laughs> <laughs> you mistake me, my dear. I have a high respect of your nerves. They are my old friends. The business of Mr. Bennett's life was to keep his daughters alive. alive. And the business of Mrs. Bennett's was to get them married. married. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Mr. Mr. Bailey was single and gentlemanlike. He had a fine countenance and uneasy, affected manners. But his friend, Mr. Darcy, soon drew the attention to the room with his fine, handsome features. And the reports being of his having to kill unmentionables over a thousand in a year over the accountant of killing people. And the gentleman pronouncing as a fine figure of a man, and the ladies de described that he was much more handsome than Mr. Mr. Bailey was known for his good manners, but soon they turned the tide of his popularity. Well, you seem to be dancing with the most handsome girl in the room, said Mr. Darcy, looking at eldest Miss Bennet. Oh, she is the most beautiful creature I ever beheld. But there is one of her sisters sitting right there behind you. She is very pretty, and I dare say this is very agreeable. <laughs> Looking at Elizabeth for a moment, so catching her eyes, he immediately looked you and coldly said, She is tolerable, not even more handsome to actually catch my eye. But anyway, I have no time to actually look at girls who get slighted by other men. The current demanded she avenge your honor. Elizabeth draw to her side, making no attention to what she's about to be doing. There, concealed beneath her dress, she drew her dagger. However, she grabbed the handle of her weapon, and the chorus scream filled the assembly hall. Ah! Immediately joined by the shattering of window panes. Unmentionable! They poured in in every direction, with their movements swift yet clumsy, but their bodies were filled with extreme untidiness. The dead were grey and brittle, and their eyes and tongues long since turned to dust, and their lips turned into everlasting skeletal smiles. <laughs> Unfortunately, a few guests who were seated near the windows were seized on and eaten oh. upon at once. And when Elizabeth stood, she saw Mercer's long struggle try to free herself. While there was two females, dreadful, burst into her head, cracking a skull like a walnut and sending showers of dark blood, spouting high as the chandeliers. 
as guests flooding through every direction. Mr. Bailey came in and his voice cut through the commotion. Girls! Pentagram of death! 